Morning, everyone. Could anyone else relate to the words of that song? Sometimes we don't know where we're going. Sometimes we don't know why things happen to us. But this is a special journey that was created for us. It's unique. And as the uh, divine dip shared with us, accept it. Sometimes that's a real hard word, but it's uh, very important because once we begin to start accepting life, it becomes easier. We get in the flow. Resist, forget it. Accept, move through it. So it's really good. Uh, we have been going through a series on beginning to understand who we really are and what's happening with our life. And um, Cindy uh, uh, started us out with three wonderful services. And the first one was Man the Perfect Creation. Man the Perfect Creation. And sometimes we miss the mark on seeing our perfection. We look at the wrinkles, the crinkles, and maybe misqualified energy. When uh, we were created perfect, that perfect light that's within our hearts, that's, we go there, and that's who we can really see and then become. So uh, perfect man is God's perfect creation. And uh, the hashtag for that is knowing, beginning to know who we are. Uh, the second service that she did was uh, silence, in the silence. And the silence is for all of us. And in the silence, we get understanding. In the silence, we get our own understanding. We all have our own questions, don't we? And so we all need our own understanding. The silence is where we get our understanding, your personal, our personal understanding. That still small voice is just for you. The third one last week was transformation. Transformation, wow, we can change, can't we? Yes, we have a resounding uh, yes from the crowd out there. <laughs> okay. Yes, we can transform, can't we? Yes. Yes. And, and so what's transformation but letting go? You know, to begin in the silence, we might get some guidance on something that maybe we're done with and uh, really isn't serving us anymore. And then uh, if we want to transform, uh, we have to begin that process of letting go. It's an action step that's very important. So transformation, letting go, and then that's what allows us into lift into clarity of our perfections, which is very cool. And then uh, today I'm going to be speaking on um, uh, metaphysical uh, pilgrimage, pilgrimage, and metaphysical pilgrimage is I would uh, use the buzzword for uh, being. To begin to take all these concepts and understandings and revelations of who we are and then put them into our life to walk with that understanding, awareness, or even foundational understanding. So uh, metaphysical pilgrimage. I want to start with, and I thought this was very uh, appropriate, spirit kind of works, we all know this, part of the metaphysical pilgrimage we're on. Uh, and so this is a poem called Movement, and this is from Spirit, okay? The time has come for us to take a step. Motion is the key that frees us from inertia's grip, allowing us to be. The thought that trains the elephant that impedes its right to be isn't so much different than the thoughts of you and me. It's up to us to listen the silence, a gift for all, affords the genuine seeker a glimpse of higher law. To move from random happenstance reveals we do have choice. It's one of life's most precious gifts, allows our soul a voice. That's our metaphysical pilgrimage. It's always time for us to get moving. A lot of times we might find ourselves um, stuck, no vision, allow inertia to grab a hold of us and begin that downward spiral. And sometimes it's as simple as taking a step. It's time to move, to, to shift, interrupt the sequence that's holding us and allowing us to move. And so once we begin to move, that 
opens us up to flow because life is flow. The thought that trains the elephant that impedes its right to be. Is anyone here aware of any thoughts that they're holding that impedes their right to be? The divine father, the divine mother, the child of God in manifestation. We train ourselves with our thoughts. So as we begin to go within that silence and begin to listen and then respond. The silence is a gift for us all. And it's our unique time to get our unique guidance. I would say the bottom line for guidance is love. And as we begin to love ourselves more, we begin to be that love in the world. And then we can move from random happenstance. Why is this happening to me? You see? Randomness in life. Randomness in life happens because we allow it to happen. We don't have purpose. So we'll begin to pull out of the rapid happenstance of life to take the time to be in the silence. Be still and know we give our soul a voice. To give our soul a voice is probably paramount in our walk. We're here on a soul journey. We are here on a soul journey. So it would behoove us to listen to our soul. Our soul has a plan. Acceptance. Allowing that divine voice from within to guide us in those times of unknowing, in those times of fear, in those times of inertia and let go. So metaphysical pilgrimage, a pilgrimage, a journey to a sacred place or shrine, or one of exalted purpose. Wow. And it's pretty cool to go on metaphysical pilgrimages, you know. And metaphysical is beyond, meta, beyond, beyond the physical, beyond the physical trappings of our experiences. To see beyond, to begin to look beyond. Uh, I think a metaphysical pilgrimage has more to do with why we go rather than where we go. And for a real long time, man has been caught up in where to go and missing the point of why to go. Why to go. Uh, at InterQuest, uh, we've taken a lot of journeys in our, this is our 31st year, InterQuest, yay God. So we've taken a lot of uh, journeys, spiritual journeys, and um, Cindy will get guidance from God, so it's not happenstance. We're following guidance. And say, so, okay, we're going to go here. And so we put out, hey, we're going to go here, and then a bunch of people go, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And our uh, journeys, we do, I would say most of them have gone to sacred spaces, places on the planet. However, what's different about our inner quest journeys is it's not so much we're going to the, see the physical buildings or the area. We're going and we're going to tap into the energy. We're going to tap into the information of that sacred space. We're going to even tap into the beings that are holding that sacred space. And then the process, we can get an understanding, a true understanding, because we're going within and we're connecting with God to get the inner knowing, perhaps why that was created. Because there's lots of stories. And I think the older that we get, that we understand a lot of the stories that we've been told really aren't the truth. So we take our spiritual journeys and we go to these places and then we be in the silence. We'll be still and then ask to know, to commune, to be. And then the understanding or information that we receive can you be applied to now? To now. See, we should always bring our experiences to the forefront. We want to take them out of the subconscious. We want to take them out of the stories. We want to make the stories real. And so when we connect with that energy, 
past and present, they're still there holding a frequency. And then to that connection, to that communion, and, and then we'll be guided by God what's ours to do there. What is the next step for us, mankind, on the planet? The mystical journeys that we take are powerful. And in the process, we all get a understanding collectively. But during that journey, each and every one of the individuals has gotten a personal revelation. That's the metaphysical pilgrimage. To go there and get the information and then to be able to integrate into our consciousness now so that it can be used for now. Metaphysical pilgrimage to go to that sacred space to begin to understand that there is more than just the physical building or land. Allowing our journey to be guided by God. To be guided by God. So as we get the collective understanding, the bigger understanding, we transform individually and collectively. And that's the power of a metaphysical pilgrimage. And we can come together and we can go with groups of people and we could do it on our own. I think an uh, ultimate um, metaphysical pilgrimage is that journey within our heart. Jesus sought to reveal a world beyond man's consciousness, beyond race consciousness. He sought to show us and give us a new identity. He asked us to look beyond. Look beyond what you see. Look beyond what's happening to you. One of our, my favorite sayings from Jesus is to be in the world, but not of the world. Well, wow, that's a good one, isn't it? To be in the world and not of the world. Well, what does that look like? What could that look like? To not get in lockstep with race consciousness and follow old stories? Or to begin to go within, it's the Father within who speaks these words. Get the guidance for now and walk. Walk our metaphysical pilgrimage. You know, we started um, InterQuest. Uh, InterQuest, a metaphysical Christian church. A lot of people can't understand that. They can't understand how we could put metaphysical and Christian in the same sentence. But when we begin to go within the silence and ask that our heart be open, our eyes be open, it's real easy to see. And the time we live in right now with this uh, expansion in consciousness and uh, information available to us daily, we're able more and more to see it in our life. We are all seeing ourselves differently than our parents are themselves. We see ourselves playing a different role in life than our parents saw themselves playing a role in life. Evolution and consciousness. We are beginning, how's this, metaphysical Christians, to really take to heart a metaphysical pilgrimage. We have come to this sacred planet, planet Earth, on a pilgrimage. We forgot what the pilgrimage was all about. And then Jesus said, hey, wake up. Wake up. Y'all have a heart. Start connecting with your heart. Go into the silence. Listen. Be still and know. Be still and remember. Remember who you are. And it's not always what you see is what you get. It's what you want in your heart is what you get. 
That's what Jesus was revealing, showing us that step in our beingness, in our sacred journey on this planet. The song was beautiful. It's a journey that we're on, and we're blessed every day. And to begin to look at ourselves as being blessed every day allows us to stay on the path of a sacred journey, a metaphysical perspective. We all know that hindsight's 2020. We might not understand why things happen to us in the moment, but a little farther down the line, we go, oh, I, I see that now. And that wasn't as bad for me as I thought it was, you say. Perspective. Perspective is important. The experience of reality is different, and what makes it different is thought. We can all have the same experience, but it's the thoughts that we're holding, the consciousness that we're living, that determines our experience. The experience of reality is different, and thought makes it different. And I think that's a powerful statement and understanding that we can take is that not everyone has to think like I think, or I don't have to think like someone else thinks. If we can go to that core within, that perfect light and love I am, and just be that, be the expression of that, own that, that's when we create harmony on the planet. Creating harmony on the planet. To be our own tone, our own note, that's what creates harmony. If you go to a, a opera or a symphony before it starts in the orchestras, everybody's tuning up their instruments and it just sounds chaotic and crazy. But then when they all get tuned, all they're doing is tuning in their own instrument. And once it's tuned and they start playing, harmony is created. And we are a unique vibration on the planet. We came to share our unique vibration, our unique essence, our unique energy. And if we share that, we create harmony on the planet. If we withhold it, we create disharmony within our beingness because life is flow. So as we begin to allow our uniqueness, our energies to flow, we lift the whole. And we free ourselves from past patterns that have held us in inertia. Our daily life becomes a metaphysical pilgrimage when we take the time to look a little deeper into our experiences, to look beyond the physical. That will free us from being trapped in matter. See, we came here to spiritualize matter, not to own it. We're stewards, flow, manage energy, manage this beautiful sacred space to be good managers. That's part of our metaphysical pilgrimage. This journey of understanding, as we begin to grow and expand and be that divine son, that divine daughter of God, that allows us to be free in giving on all levels, physical, mental, emotional, financial because we are tapped into a different source that's beyond the physical. And we have taught that from the gun here. Or it's on a bumper sticker. <laughs> Find what you like to do and you'll never work a day in your life. Has anybody ever heard that one? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yay, God. We don't call this work. This is our life. We love it. We love it. You know, it's like, 
I was talking to someone last week at church, and I and um, I goes, I love Sunday. I love Sunday. I love when y'all come. Everybody comes, and we're gonna get more and more people every Sunday. But there's a good crowd of people here today. There's a good crowd of people here today. And um, <laughs> but I said I love Sunday because I this is it. I mean, we're fed, aren't we, Cindy? We we just love this. This is it. Because this is life. You say, and he goes, oh, well. Friday is your day off. Don't you like Friday? <laughs> he goes, no, I got to work on Friday. I got to go grocery shopping, do laundry, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Sunday is so much fun for us. And, and, and I'll see a lot of you guys smiling too, so I know it's fun for you. But, <laughs> but you see, when we look at church, not as a duty, how's that, or a should, and to make it a desire, you see. And then our desires are fi- fulfilled a hundredfold, thousandfold. And it's just a shift, a shift in perspective. Like metaphysical Christianity, to me, is a uh, metaphysical pilgrimage, you see. It's the same thing. And all we're doing is we're just trying to put all these laws and understandings and uh, love into action in our life. And it's really powerful when you have a group of people that you can share your week with or what's happening in your life that they kind of understand from that perspective. See, we're all in the same book. We might not be on the same page, but we're all in the same book. We're in a metaphysical book, beyond the physical. And we move from uh, being... Uh, I hate to use the word, I'll use it anyways. Uh, I, we move from being a victim to being a victor. They both start with V, that's pretty good, isn't it? So let's not move from victim to victor, a victor in life. And uh, we can all do that. And uh, when we share that with others and then people support us, when uh, we share our dreams with others, isn't it nice to hear people say, I support you in that. That sounds cool. I support you in your dream. I can see that happening, you see. Those words are so powerful. We can speak those words to one another. And they are more powerful than we think. And then they're really powerful when we speak it from our heart, you see. The spiritual truth, you see. Not just that we're supposed to say nice things. To really be happy. And, and so we share that. And so our metaphysical um, pilgrimage can be an experience of self-realization, true self-realization, spiritual understanding I am. Metaphysical pilgrimage. Wow. I'm going, I am such a simple person. <laughs> That's what life is. Okay, I'm done. Life's a spiritual being. So to share some insights, or God, help me. That was that one, you know. And, and so to begin to look at, you know, our walk as a metaphysical pilgrimage, we've come to a sacred place, earth. There are people dying to get out of here, and there's a hundred times more people dying to get in here. You see? Because this place is a blessing. Earth is a blessing. You know? and, and so once we begin to open up our spiritual eyes and get on the metaphysical pilgrimage, we can see that. We can finally see what this planet's all about. And we can begin to understand why we're here. While we're here. Metaphysically, I don't think we're here to end up with the most toys. You see? (laughs) (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with toys. (laughs) But what's our intention? See, what's our intention? Our intention, love. Being who we are, you know? And, and it's just like, 
find what you want to do and you'll never work a day in your life. It's like when you begin to just give love, the universe will just shower you back with love and all the blessings, all the blessings that you, your heart desires. That's a metaphysical pilgrimage. That's the paradigm we want to step into. To not have to work by the sweat of our brow. You see? And be worthy. Be worthy to be blessed, to be worthy to receive. That's not part of the metaphysical pilgrimage. You see? That's race consciousness, old stories. I love the word gospel. The good news. The good news. So Jesus brings the good news. You're loved. Y'all are loved. Wake up. You're loved. God's your father. God loves you and wants to give you your greatest blessing. I don't have to do anything? No. Just know God's your father. You see? Begin to live in alignment and understand that we're all brothers and sisters. We're all in the family. That's a metaphysical pilgrimage. I think Jesus gave the most profound and yet simple teachings. And I think Jesus is still guiding us today. I know he's guiding me. I know he's guiding Cindy. And I know he's guiding y'all. But if we just go within and ask to really feel Jesus, if we go within and ask to see Jesus, you see? It's metaphysical, beyond the physical. Beyond the physical. And so what we do when we get on the metaphysical pilgrimage path, we're beginning to reveal to the world and to one another God's love, who we truly are. That's the power of walking on this metaphysical pilgrimage path to walk the spiritual path. Metaphysical pilgrimage leads us to self-realization, true self-realization for our soul. Nature is so powerful, it puts it simply before us. And the caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly syndrome, how's that? The caterpillars walking along earth, fulfilling its purpose. We need caterpillars. But when it comes time to change and to grow and expand in consciousness, the caterpillar constructs a cocoon and goes within. And a funny thing happens. Metamorphosis. We all learned that in grade school. That's an awesome word, metamorphosis. And through that process, that caterpillar dissolves its whole body. It doesn't even, it's a liquid in essence. And then recreates the body of a butterfly and frees itself from the bonds of earth to fly. And our metaphysical pilgrimage can afford us that same experience. We see ourselves walking along the planet, two feet on the ground, working, sweating, doing all the shoulds, asking for coulds. And then one day we wake up, it's time to change. It's time to change. I'm, gonna let, I'm done being a caterpillar. So we get on this new path. And we ingest some new thought. 
and new awareness is, and we shift our consciousness, we might have to take a, a, a metaphysical pilgrimage. But the most powerful metaphysical pilgrimage that we could take is to go within. To go within. The Father within. You see? And by that going within, a cocoon, we begin transformation. We begin changing. And people go, what's different about you? You see? I, can, I will say, everyone in here had people say that to them. What's different about you? What are you doing? You see what I'm saying? And if we're strong, oh, I'm meditating, I'm really living spiritual life. But, you say, but if we don't want to go there, we can go, I'm just happy. How's that? That's an easy, easy word to say. But that's what a metaphysical pilgrimage can do for us. We can be transformed. And it's powerful to do that. So it's to be willing to let God come forth, to let God, your inner Christ, come forth. And as we allow the God to come forth, that's what allows our soul a voice. This is who I am. This is who I am. Jesus is ever guiding us on the ultimate pilgrimage, the pilgrimage within to Father. So let's all go within now. So as you sit in your chair, just close your eyes. And once again, as you breathe in, breathe in God's love. And then as you exhale, just exhale God's love out into this room. And in this process, we cleanse the temple and we create a sacred space. Receiving love freely and giving love freely. Transformed in God's love. And as you breathe, just be aware of your body. And just feel how good it feels to breathe in God's love. Breathe with intention. I breathe God's love. God's love is flowing through me now. I feel it. I breathe God's love. God's love is healing me now. And just breathe and feel that gentle love, that warmth, radiant energy moving through, healing you now, physically, emotionally, mentally, soul. I breathe God's love. God's love is flowing through me now. I know it, I feel it, and I am grateful. Just breathe and allow the words to echo from your heart. I breathe God's love. God's love is flowing through me now. I know it, I feel it, and I am grateful. And I thank God, my Father, I can accomplish all things. So just breathe in God's love. And I thank God, my Father, I can accomplish all things. So just breathe and feel your unique vibration. This is who you are. This is who I am. Be still and know. Take a breath. Gently wiggle your toes and fingers and gently open your eyes. And I thank God I can accomplish all things. Does anybody want to make that their affirmation this week? I thank God, my Father, I can accomplish all things. The source of wisdom, love, and power patiently 
awaits release. Yeah, you got it.